so what happened? They made me leave the hospital. Um, they wouldn't let me talk to, you know, who I needed to talk to. I wrote down on the form because they forced me out. I wrote down on the form. I want to know why I stopped breathing on that, on that surgery, surgery form. And that's still there years later. And I went home. I went home with a prescription for a bottle of opioids. The doc, the surgeon knew what drugs I was on. He knew I was having problems breathing. My do me saying my body doesn't want to breathe anymore when I get into bed. Something's ha quote unquote, something's happening to me when I'm asleep. He knew what drugs I was on. I didn't understand what those drugs were. I didn't know un how powerful those drugs were. I didn't know the drug classifications. I didn't know what drugs are contraindicated for those drugs. What shouldn't be prescribed with those drugs. What shouldn't be prescribed for those drugs are opioids. I was on lorazepam, clonazepam, and zopiclone. I'm having problems breathing. The stopping breathing in the hospital, you know what that was? That was undiagnosed sleep apnea. I had been fighting to get diagnosed for a couple of years at that time, and I continued to fight for years afterwards. Any anesthesiologist or surgeon would know that that's likely why I stopped breathing in their care, and I needed to be assessed immediately for sleep apnea. You don't send somebody home with opioids when they're suffering from apnea and stopping breathing. The saying, my body doesn't want to breathe anymore when I get into bed, in retrospect, you know what that is? That's respiratory depression. That means, you know, the brain, the body, the heart and lungs are slowing down, maybe from a medical medical reason, but also most certainly from the drugs that I was being prescribed. And then you're going to pile opioids on top of that. I suffer from respiratory, I, I suffer from slow, shallow breathing. Um, hypoventilation, I often retain carbon dioxide, but I didn't know that. But the language I was using was appropriate. The, what I was telling him as a, as a patient was totally appropriate. He should have known. He should have, it should have rang some bells. It's not his job to diagnose. But it's his job and the anesthesiologist's job to determine whether I'm healthy enough and strong enough to go into a surgery. And when you've got a patient saying something bad is happening to me when I'm asleep, my body doesn't want to breathe anymore. My body's breathing way too slow. I can't do powerful drugs. Ding, 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 ding. That's an alarm bell that this lady might have problems with anesthesia and opioids, right? So this is how people go home from surgery with a prescription for opioids. They're taking the regular medications and they don't wake up. And this is what we call, quote unquote, complications of surgery, complications from anesthesia, when in fact, this is a prescribing issue. This is undiagnosed apnea. And to be fair, it, this is not this surgeon's job to diagnose apnea, but when a, or, or respiratory depression or hypoventilation, uh, but when a patient is talking like this, you know, a surgeon's job should be to say, well, you know what? It sounds like you've got some undiagnosed things here and I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable to do this surgery or 
you know, prior to going into the surgery, I think maybe you need to talk to your family doctor and maybe you need um, some referrals to respirology because it sounds like you've got things going on here that might not necessarily be safe for surgery. Which would have been the appropriate thing to do. The family doctor... Family doctor most certainly had a responsibility in this situation. I'll do another video about that. 